In the preceding videos, I introduced what tensors are in general, and then we dug into scalars, which are tensors that have zero dimensions. In this video, we'll expand our discussion to one-dimensional tensors, more commonly known as vectors. I'll also demonstrate how to create and transpose vectors in NumPy, TensorFlow, and PyTorch, the most prominent Python libraries for manipulating tensors. Vectors are one-dimensional arrays of numbers. So these are typically denoted in lowercase, italics, and bold. So this contrasts with scalars, which are in italics and lowercase, but not bold. So we're going to look at an example of that in a second. Vectors are arranged in an order. So all the elements in the vector are in a specific order, and then we can access each one of the elements in that vector by its index. So here's that example of the distinction between vectors and scalars in terms of notation. So each of the elements in a vector are scalars, so individual numbers, and so those aren't bold. So if we want to denote the second element of some vector, x, which is bolded, then we denote that with x subscript 2, uh, and this is not bolded. So if we were referring to this vector here, which has a length of 2, then the second element, x2, is this number 4 here. We can think of vectors as representing a particular point in space. A vector of length 2 represents a location in a 2D matrix or in a two-dimensional space. So this vector here of length 2, it has two scalars in it, x1 and x2, which contain the values 12 and 4. And so we can represent that in a matrix where the point is um, identified by being 12 units along the x1 axis and 4 units along the x2 axis right here. If we had a vector of length 3, then that vector would represent a location in a 3D cube. So if we had one more dimension here, then you could imagine a third dimension in this grid depth so that would be you know, going away from your computer screen or coming out of your computer screen towards you. And so a three-dimensional vector represents a point in that kind of three-dimensional space. It should follow pretty straightforwardly then that if a vector of length 2 represents a location in 2D space, a vector of length 3 represents a location in a 3D cube, then a vector of any length n represents a location in some n-dimensional tensor in some n-dimensional space. Difficult to imagine visually, but computers can handle it no problem. All right, so having introduced what vectors are, let's talk about the most simple operation, which we perform very often on vectors, and this is vector transposition. So we denote transposition with a capital letter T as a superscript on a vector, and transposition transforms a vector from a row vector to a column vector or vice versa, from a column vector to a row vector. So all of the elements in a vector remain intact when we transpose it, and they remain in order. Simply, the vector transforms from being a row to being a column. And so if the row vector has a length of three, then its shape in matrix notation, which we'll talk about more later, but to summarize quickly, it always has rows before columns. So this row vector has one row and three columns. Then when we transpose it, the elements stay in order, but the shape of the vector is now three rows and one column. Let's look at some hands-on code to bring these ideas to life in Python. All right, so we're continuing along in our Intro to Linear Algebra notebook. We've already talked about scalars in here, which are uh, tensors of rank zero or zero-dimensional tensors. And we used base Python 
TensorFlow and PyTorch to create scalars. Now here we're going to use the NumPy library, which I'll import um, here in this cell, as well as later on we'll get into using TensorFlow and PyTorch to create vectors as well. We use the NumPy array method to create tensors of any kind of dimensionality, including one-dimensional tensors, rank one tensors like vectors. Within the array call, we specify a list of the scalar values that will be in our vector or whatever shape of tensor we have. You can optionally specify um, an additional argument, data type. So here, because all of these values in our vector are integers, we will default to having uh, integer values for all of the elements in this vector. However, if you were to optionally add in this argument here, where we're specifying that we want this to be a 16-bit float, then all of the elements would be 16-bit floats. So we could have integer values, oh, sorry, we could have decimal values um, as opposed to just integer values. So we can see here when we output our vector x, it has the three elements that we specified, pretty straightforward. We can see what the length of our vector is with len x or x.shape. And we can see what type it is. OK, it's a NumPy array. And then we can access elements of this vector, individual elements. So for example, if we wanted to access the first element in the array, the number 25, that is specified by x0 because Python is zero indexed. So the first element we denote with index zero. So yeah, so we get our 25 out that way. And we can confirm the type of these scalar values are 64-bit integers. If we had optionally created 16-bit floats or some other kind of data type, then when we looked at the type of the individual element, it would show up as whatever type we'd specified. All right, so that's creating a vector in NumPy. Now let's look at transposing a vector in NumPy. So there's this, it's such a common operation that NumPy provides this dot t that we can add onto the end of any given uh, vector, and it will transpose it for us. However, let's have a look at this. So if I execute this um, code cell, when I transpose it, it appears to have no effect whatsoever. When we look at the shape of this new xt, this supposedly transformed vector, it has the same shape as x did. And the reason for this is because a regular one-dimensional array where we specify it just with one set of square brackets in NumPy is a one-dimensional array. And so when we transpose it, there's no dimension, second dimension for it to be transposed into. However, if we create our vector with nested matrix style brackets like this, so two sets of square brackets, we're going to see a lot more of this when we start making matrices later on, then this vector has two dimensions to work with. So when we look at its shape, we see that it has one row and three columns. Unlike previously when we looked at a shape here, where this vector just had a length, effectively, of three. So once we've specified the nested square brackets, we're working with a two-dimensional um, space. And so now when we transpose with the dot t operator, we see that we now have a column vector as opposed to a row vector. And so when we ask for its shape, this y transposed has three rows and one column, just as we would expect right here from the slides. And as I mentioned earlier on in this section, we can transpose right back to the original row vector. So if we take our yt, our transposed uh, column vector, 
When we transpose that, it goes right back to the row vector that we started with. And you can confirm that it has the same shape as our starting vector two. A quick note here on zero vectors. We are going to talk about these time and again. These are vectors that consist entirely of zeros. And you can create them with, say, the NumPy zeros method. You can specify the dimensions of the tensor that you'd like. If you specify just one dimension, then it assumes you want a tensor of a particular length. And so here we are with our vector tensor consisting entirely of zeros. You're going to see zero vectors crop up here and there. And I just wanted to make sure that we were on the same page about what they are. All right, and the final little bit here that I want to cover in this video is talking about how to create vectors in PyTorch and TensorFlow. Once you know how to create any kind of tensor in PyTorch and TensorFlow, like the scalars that we created in the preceding video, it's really easy. So we use the same methods, the torch tensor method, to create a vector in PyTorch. We specify the elements that we'd like to have in our vector in the same way that we would have done it in NumPy. Um, and yeah, we just call our tensor method, and there you go. We have a PyTorch tensor that is a vector. And then same thing in TensorFlow, we use the variable method here, pass in the same kind of notation as we do in PyTorch and NumPy into that variable method, and it outputs for us a vector of length three, specifies the, uh, that it's a 32-bit integer here, and it shows us in a kind of NumPy formatted format exactly what the vector contains. All right, so now that we've seen vectors and vector transposition, up next, I'll explain how vectors can represent not only a point in space, but also a particular magnitude and direction through space.